So this next section, 6.3, is super important. A lot of what we're going to do in the rest of this class builds off of this one concept, that least common multiple. And I know we touched on it in the beginning of this class, kind of warming you up in that review. But again, there's two different ways that we can find the least common multiple. We have the book's way, which is very cut and dry and procedural, or the way when we build the least common multiple, it's a little bit more intuitive and helpful for what we're going to do in the rest of the class. So, let's take a look at both. Whichever one you're most comfortable with, run with it, as I say every single time in this class. So, to be able to add fractions, what do we need? For any fractions at all, we need common denominators. Same story for subtracting common denominators. You need to have the same amount of division in order to be able to combine them. So, we need the smallest common denominator, or the least common denominator to work with. We could work with any common denominator that we want, but if we pick the smallest one, it requires the least amount of work in the end. We won't have to simplify a whole bunch. So, to find the LCM, we use each factor the greatest number of times that it appears in any one factorization. Again, that's the book's way. And I will explain it that way, but it's a little bit easier to build. So we'll look at a numerical example first. Those are generally easier to start with. So let's break up 12 into its prime factorization. So 12 is 6 times 2, and 6 is 2 times 3. So 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. And we can double check. 4 times 3 gives me 12. Good. 30, it breaks up into what? 3 and 10. And 10 is 2 and 5. So 2 times 3 times 5 is our prime factorization for that one. So as we go to build the least common multiple, again, we, I'm just going to show you the book's way and then show you what I'm going to do. So, book's way. Greatest number of times that the factor 2 shows up between each of these factorizations. Greatest number of times is 2. So we need to take two factors of 2 into our least common multiple. We need to look at the other factors. So, 3, greatest number of times it shows up is once up here, once down there. So we need one factor of 3. And the last factor we have is 5. Shows up once down here, none up there. So the greatest number of times is 1. So if we multiply that all together, least common multiple we're looking at is 60. So you can go that route, looking and comparing how many times a factor shows up between the factorizations. And what I like to do, my least common multiple is designed to be divisible by both 12 and 30. So I know that it's at least going to contain one factor of 12 or one factor of 30. So in the very beginning, least common multiple, I always pick the first one, generally the easiest to go with. I know that my least common multiple is going to have 2 times 2 times 3. It has to be divisible by 12. That's what we're designing it to do. But at the same time, it also has to be divisible by 30. So, to build, what do we need to do? We need to look at our least common multiple and ask, what is my LCM missing that these other factors have? So, what is this one missing that this one has? So, is it missing a 2? Nope, I've already taken into account one of them. And in fact, I've got an extra from 12. And 3 I've already taken into account, but I'm missing a factor of 5. So I need to add that in. Do we get the same? 2, 2, 3, 5. Yes. So our LCM is 60. So personally, I like to build it. It will be helpful when we start to actually add and subtract fractions together. But if you're not comfortable with it, go with the books route. Compare the number of times each thing shows up. So next, we have some variables involved. 
but it's a very similar concept. Let's break up each term into its prime factorization so we can compare. So 12, we've already broken that breaking. We've already broken that up. 2 times 2 times 3. But additionally, I have a factor of x involved. So we took care of the first. 16y, how does it break up? 8 times 2, and 8 is 3 factors of 2. So I need 4 of them all together. And if you need to do the little factor tree on the side, that's fine. 2 times 2, 2 times 2. So I know all of my factors broken down. 4 factors of 2. And what else? I've got one factor of y. We took care of the prime factorization of that one. And 8, how does it break down? Oh, but instead I have 8xyz. 8 is 3 factors of 2, and I've got an x, a y, and a z. Prime factorization is done. So let's start to build my least common multiple. I just like to take the first. I know it's going to have to be divisible by 12x. So it's going to have to contain 2, 2, 3, and x. And let's look. What is this one missing that this other factorization has? So what is this one missing that the other one has? I've already taken into account two factors of 2, but what am I missing? Two more factors of 2. And what else? I'm missing a factor of y. Okay, but we're looking between three terms, so we need to ask again, what is my LCM missing that this one has? Have we taken into account all of those factors of 2? Yep. Have we taken into account the x? Yes. The y? Yes. What are we missing? Z. And multiplication is commutative, so we can change the order around and multiply all of our numbers together first. So when we do that, I've got four factors of 2, one factor of 3, and an x, y, z. So 2 to the 4th times 3 is 48, x, y, z. So that number, that term, is going to be divisible by each of these. If I take that and divide it by every single one of these, I get out a whole, whole number and variables. They're all up in the numerator. No fractions involved. The next one. Now I have polynomials to deal with, but it's still the same concept. We need to break it down into its factorization. But when we go to factor these, we get expressions being multiplied. Same exact concept. So let's take x squared minus 25 and factor it. It's a difference of squares. And what factors do we need? x and 5. So one's positive, one's negative. So we still have a prime factorization. I have, here's my first thing being multiplied, second thing being multiplied. And we're comparing it with 2x minus 10. So we need to factor common between these two that we can take out is a 2, and we're left with x minus 5. So let's build our least common multiple. I know it's going to be divisible by x squared minus 25, so I'm going to take both factors, and we need to look. What is my LCM missing that this one has? What is this one missing that that one has? A factor of 2. We've already taken into account x minus 5. We don't want any repeats. It means we'll have to simplify in the end. So our least common multiple in that example, again, is this entire factor. And it's helpful to leave the LCM factored when we're dealing with polynomials, because eventually we want to see if anything can cancel. Okay. But it's a little bit easier to work with, you know, a product here, all of them multiplied out, and then writing out 2 times 2 times 3 times x times 2 times 2 times y times z every single time when you're writing the bottom of that fraction. Just realized I went a little bit out of order. 
So this one is on your next page, but let's jump back to the beginning. So on the first page, the very last example, we want to find the least common multiple between these two polynomials. So we need to factor them first of all. How does x squared plus 5x minus 6 factor? I know I need an x and an x, and I need one that's positive and one that's negative. And the larger one needs to be positive. What factors of 6 will multiply to 6? Multiply to negative 6 and add to positive 5. I need positive 6, negative 1, factor, and our binomial is a difference of squares. So we get x plus 1, x minus 1. So when we go to build the LCM, again, I know it has to be divisible by one of these. I just choose the first. So it has to have x plus 6 and x minus 1 involved. But I need to look and see what is this one missing that my other factor has. What is my LCM missing that this one has? That factor of x plus 1. Doesn't matter the order that you start with. If I started with these two factors and had to look at my first polynomial, what is this one missing that this one has? That factor of x plus 6 we still get the same least common multiple. So I just go with the first because it's there and it's easy, but it really doesn't matter the order that you go in. So go ahead and take those last three, find the least common multiple between those polynomials. So let's take a look at the first. We've dealt with 12 quite a bit, but we still need to write out the prime factorization of each of these. So what is 12? 2 times 2 times 3 and I'm just going to leave y3 and z as they are, not going to break them down. And for 15, x cubed z2, what is its prime factorization? 3 times 5, I've got x cubed z squared. So let's build that least common multiple. I know it's going to be divisible by one of them, so I'm going to start with the first. And we need to look. What is my LCM missing that this other factor has? I've already taken into account 3. I need a factor of 5. I don't have any x's, so I need to take all of those. And I've taken into account one of the z's, but I need one more. Alright, so multiplying it all together, writing it out a little bit nicer, what are we getting? 60 x cubed z squared, y cubed. And again, multiplication is commutative. We can change that order around for those variables and it's not going to matter. All right, next, polynomials, so we need to factor them. How does this one break down? Got a 1 on the front, and when I multiply, I need it to give me a positive, and when I add, I need it to give me a positive. So both signs are positive. And I need to break up 4 to multiply to 4, add to 5. So I need 4 and 1. And for the second polynomial, similar story, but 1 is prime, and I need it to multiply and add to give me positive, so both of them need to be positive. And we can check. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. We get there. So as we build that LCM, I know it's going to be divisible by one of them. I'm going to choose the first, and we need to ask, what is my LCM missing that this other one has? Another factor of y plus 1. So another way that we could write that LCM, so when we're writing all of the fractions out, when we try to add and subtract them, how else could we report it? That entire quantity, y plus 4, times y plus 1 raised to what power? 2. I've got two factors of y plus 1 being multiplied together. Very last, we have three, same concept, we need to factor them all. So we've seen how this one factors, same exact thing over here, just different variables. x plus 1 and x plus 1, it's a perfect square trinomial. 
And with this binomial, what do they share in common that we can take out? 3x. When we do that, we're left with x minus 1. And the last a binomial is a difference of squares. We get x plus 1, x minus 1. So building that LCM, I know it's going to be divisible by one of them. I just start with the first. And we need to ask, what is my LCD missing that this other one has? All of it. I'm missing 3x and x minus 1. And we need to check with our third term as well. What is this one missing that this one has? Anything? taken x plus 1 into account, and I've taken x minus 1 into account. So that's all done. And a nicer way to write this as well, we like to have the little monomials on the front generally. x minus 1, we only have one factor there, but I've got two factors of x plus 1. So we can write that as x plus 1 quantity squared. And if you don't like this method, go back to the books and take the greatest number of times a factor shows up. But I encourage you to get comfortable with building the LCM. It's going to help us in the next few sections.